Hi guys and welcome to the No Gluten Zone. I create content for people with food issues, whether that's allergies, sensitivities, intolerances, or autoimmune issues that affect your diet. If that sounds good to you, consider subscribing, hit the like button, and if you hit the bell, you'll be notified when I upload future videos. Today, I wanted to start a series, and it will all be incorporated into one video in the end, but this is day one, for making your own sourdough starter, a gluten-free sourdough starter. But if you're not gluten-free, you can use these same principles to make your own sourdough starter. I am going to use brown rice flour. I did mill it myself. The fresher milled it is, they say the better it works. You can mill this in your blender. Like if you have a Vitamix, you could do that if you wanted to. I did buy a grain mill at one point and I do it, but you can also do this with store-bought milled flour. It's fine. I will say I have used other flours in the past. One of my favorites was an almond flour sourdough starter. And I've seen so many people say, no, you can't from that. Yes, you can. And it was amazing. I am now nut free. Nuts are a problem for, I have eosinophilic esophagitis. I found out a couple years ago and nuts are definitely a trigger for that. So I'm now nut free. But I do recommend trying, if you can have almonds and you're interested, try that almond flour sourdough starter because it was fantastic. Okay, so I do want to point out that when you do sourdough starters, you are growing natural yeast, wild yeast in here. So stuff is growing and you're encouraging stuff to grow. So you want to start with a super, super clean jar. I imagine a dishwasher will clean it really well. Truth be told, we don't use our dishwasher much. So what I like to do, just for peace of mind, because I have tried starting sourdough starters in the past and they go bad from bad bacteria getting in. So I like to make sure I start with a super, super clean jar. I put these in the oven at 275 degrees for 30 minutes. Take them out, let them cool down. You don't want it super hot while you're putting your stuff in here. And then I start from there. And anytime my jar gets a little crusty, for example, for example, this is my current starter. And you can see how it ends up building up on the sides. After enough of that, I don't like it. And I start with a fresh jar and I bake it and start all over again. Okay, so this is day one. And we're just gonna put one quarter cup of flour and one quarter cup of warm water in here. I heat the water in the microwave for 10 to 15 seconds, depending on the amount. For this, I did 10 seconds, and I, then I feel it with my finger, but I'm gonna take the temperature just to share with you. So it's about 95 degrees, and I would say that's good, but you know, if you just dip your finger in, you want it warm to the touch, but not hot, because if it's too hot, it will kill off the good bacteria. If it's not warm enough, it's just not gonna be conducive to feeding your starter. One final word on water is it's not recommended to use tap water. I am using a bottled spring water. Um, I will also say this, I know this is not common, but my family likes distilled water. We often distill our own water and drink it. And I did learn the hard way that that doesn't work for sourdough starter either. So a good purified, filtered, bottled water should do the job. So I'm going to put one quarter cup brown rice flour in here. I'm going to add my water. And I like to use a chopstick. They say it's best to not use something metal. So wooden spoons or, you know, silicone type utensils would work well, but the chopstick is nice and skinny. It can get in here. It can get into the little corners and you want to mix it up really, really well. You don't want chunks of flour that haven't been incorporated with the water. And it's early. This is not going to do anything, but just for future reference, I like to take a rubber band and put it over the top. And, you know, if you're looking from the outside, it's sometimes it can be hard to see where the line is because of all this stuff on the wall. But if you look down through the top, you can see so easily where it is. And so I just line up each side. I put the rubber band right at the top. And like I said, this isn't going to grow. This isn't going to do anything. But this will help you to see 
when it has grown, when it goes above the rubber band, then you're like, my starter is doing something. And so it's really cool to watch. And then I have had sourdough starters get ruined in the past from a gnat or something falling in there, right? So I like to keep a coffee filter on top and I secure it with a rubber band. And I'm gonna leave this sit out on the counter at room temperature and I will do another video tomorrow when we come back and we continue working on this. Welcome back. It's day two of getting our sourdough starter started. If you look in here, you will see some little like bubbles. So you're going to remove half of this. I love the shape of this for this purpose. But any anything non-metal will work. Silicone, wood. So scrape out half. And then we're going to add another quarter cup of brown rice flour or whatever flour you're using. and a quarter cup of warm water. And you're going to mix that all up. And Again, it's early, it's not gonna rise, so you don't really need to put this, it's just a habit for me to put this at the top of where your starter sits. And then you will be able to clearly see when it does rise. And I put its little hat back on, and I'll meet you back here for day three tomorrow. Hi guys and welcome back to day three of getting your sourdough starter going. I have to show you this up close today. So this is why I mark the level with a rubber band because you can see it's above it right now. I know some of this is just dried on, but right here, this little layer right here is above the rubber band. And do you see those bubbles in there? So day three and we already have activity happening. This is really exciting. Okay, so once again, we're going to discard at least half and we're going to feed it one quarter cup of brown rice flour or flour you're using and one quarter cup of warm water. It has an odor today. Um, it did not yesterday. It's not a pleasant odor. It's not a sourdough odor, but that is normal early on. It gets like while it's getting going. This is like not usable yet. It's not ready, but it's getting started. So it kind of has like a, I don't know, almost like a chemically type odor. So that's normal. Don't, don't panic. Don't think you're doing something wrong or it went bad. Okay. I discarded flour in here. And the water. Got my chopstick. And I'm going to mix it all up. You know, make sure you get into the corners um, and as much as you can on the, the sides of it. You don't want flour sitting in there that has not been incorporated. And you also kind of want to whisk it around a little vigorously and kind of incorporate some air into it. So I'm going to put this back on. And when you look from the inside, it's really easy to see exactly the top of your starter where you can line up. When I try to look from out here, I have to get the lighting just right to kind of see through what's dried on the sides. But when I look down through the top, I can totally see and get it perfectly right at the top of the starter. And I just line up all four sides. And I'm gonna cover it up. And I'm gonna put it back on my counter and I'll meet you back here tomorrow. Um, keep in mind that the temperature in your home is going to affect your sourdough starter very much. 
it has really cooled off here. Um, you know, during the summer, I don't use, I don't bake as much. I still bake during the summer out of necessity, but not, it's not like for fun, pleasure baking as much in the heat. I try, I minimize it. So I don't really use this that much. Although you can do a lot with your, like your discard and even your starter um, without baking, you can do things on the stove and what in the waffle maker and stuff like that. So you can use it. And I do sometimes, I just don't use it as much, but as soon as the temperature dropped here, like I was pulling out my starter and getting going again and using it more, it's just kind of an instinctive thing. And then I will leave it on the counter while I'm using it a lot. When I'm not using it a lot, it goes back in the refrigerator and then I can feed it a lot less. I just have to feed it at least once a week. But if you keep it out in the heat of summer, you might need to feed it like even twice a day to keep it good. So with the temperature dropped right now, I'm actually surprised that this is advancing as fast as it is, but that's fantastic. And we'll see how it looks tomorrow. Hi guys, and welcome back. This is day four of getting our sourdough starter started. So I want to show you this again, very much like yesterday. You see all the bubbles and it is up to about here right now. Of course, it does rise before the 20 this we're like 24 hours later from when i fed it it does rise a few hours after feeding and then it falls back down um, so we did not see the peak activity here but this is really good for four days in i will say results can vary from house to house yours may not respond this fast in four days so just hang in there and be patient with yours if it's not this quick So once again, today it smells better, not completely normal, but not the like chemically smell like yesterday. Once again, I'm going to mix it up and remove half. And then we're going to feed it one quarter cup flour. I'm still using brown rice flour and then one quarter cup warm water. It's kind of a unpleasant odor today, I have to say, but I do smell that like sourdough tang in it. So it's on its way. And I'm gonna cover it back up, put it back on the counter and I will see you tomorrow. Hi guys, welcome back. This is day five. We're going to do the exact same thing today. We're going to remove at least half. Still doesn't smell quite like it should, but the smell is improving. And then I'm going to add a quarter cup brown rice flour and a quarter cup of warm water. And I'm going to mix it up. So after this, starting tomorrow on day six, you would do this exact thing twice a day. It would then be twice a day. You would do that until it doubles in volume within six to eight hours after feeding. And you do have to look at that window. If you wait too long and it's already risen and fallen, then you missed it. So you do need to time it and check on it. But that's gonna conclude this series. I don't think you wanna keep watching me do this, especially twice a day, every day. So, but yeah, that's what you would be doing from here on out. Twice a day, every day, discarding at least half, feeding it a quarter cup of flour, quarter cup of warm water, mixing it all up and putting it back until it doubles in volume within that time frame. And then it's good. And I will just add that as you take care of it in the future, if you leave it out, you typically, once it's good and established, typically you only need to feed it once a day. But depending on the weather, when it's really warm, sometimes you do need to feed it twice a day. And if it ever gets to the point where it's not as active, what you want to do is take it down 
to just a little, little bit of starter and feed it like a lot of flour. And then you can also, if you're not using it much, you can store it in the refrigerator. Just make sure you bring it out and feed it at least once a week. If you go longer than that and you're not, you're neglecting it, it will end up getting mold and then you're done. You got to start all over again. So I wish you luck. I will continue sharing recipes on how to use it. You can use your discard as well as active starter. Discard is just unfed starter. It's basically when we're discarding at least half, that is your discard. This is not active yet, so I can't use this. But once it's alive and healthy and active, when you discard, you can keep that and you can use that in recipes too. If it says for disc sourdough discard or unfed starter, that is also another name for discard. And then if it says active starter, that is when you feed it and it's rising and it's active. So I hope this was helpful. Leave a note in the comment section on what you want to make with your sourdough starter. Have a great day, guys. God bless you.